Hi, I'm Paul Talbot. I've been working with reef aquariums all of my life, and I'm really excited to introduce you to the world's first plug and play reef aquarium, the Red Sea Max. The colorful and diverse underwater world has captivated man for ages, and since the early years, aquatic hobbyists have focused on the equipment and technology required to achieve this. Red Sea developed the Max to provide a complete reef ready system. So from the very start, you can focus on the aquarium's inhabitants rather than the hardware. This DVD covers important aspects of Max ownership and maintenance, including salt water and substrate preparation, live rock curing, livestock selection, and long-term reef care. While there are many different ways to set up and maintain a successful marine aquarium, on this DVD I'm going to show you the ways that have proven most successful for the Red Sea Max specifically. If you follow the advice and recommendations given on this DVD, I know that you'll enjoy your Red Sea Max. The Red Sea Max approach to the coral reef experience is to replicate the natural environment as faithfully as possible. In the ocean, coral reefs flourish where specific conditions prevail, such as sufficient light, adequate current, stable temperature and clear water. The Red Sea Max provides a system that recreates these conditions, allowing you to keep a thriving healthy reef aquarium in your home. Let's take a look at some of the special features of the Max, which makes caring for corals so easy. The Max has three optional hood openings. The front part for easy access. The filter and skimmer opening. Then the main hood for easy maintenance. The Max also has a unique plug power centre, which enables the aquarium to be powered through a single cord, so there's no messy cables. They are neatly tucked away in a splash proof power centre. Each component can be turned off and on from the external control panel. The splash proof control panel is convenient and safe. Light is the primary energy source of a coral reef ecosystem. Invertebrates such as corals and anemones rely on light to promote photosynthesis. These photosynthetic invertebrates harbour symbiotic algae called zooanthellae. The spectrum of light is very important for coral. The intensity of the light is also important. Though it's impractical in a home aquarium to provide the high light intensity present in natural reefs. As a general rule, the light intensity of 1 watt per litre is sufficient for marine invertebrates. As with most other organisms, fish and invertebrates require both light and dark periods for healthy biological functioning. The photo periods needed for photosynthesis is 10 to 12 hours. The Red Sea Max features a complete reef spec lighting system, including two 55 watt T5 power compact fluorescent bulbs with high polished textured aluminium reflector. This provides a total of 110 watts of light, which is adequate to support a healthy reef environment in the Max. Half of this light has a colour temperature of 10,000 Kelvin, which imitates sunlight in shallow water. The other half is actinic light, with a frequency of 420 nanometers, which imitates the bluer light of deeper levels. Together, they enhance the growth and health of even delicate stony corals and help recreate the magnificent fluorescent colors of the reef invertebrates. The Red Sea Max comes with a built-in 24-hour light timer to ensure a consistent photo period 
that replicates daylight hours, with LED moonlights to replicate night conditions to complete the natural environment. Water movement is another really important factor in reef aquaria. The role of currents in transporting nutrients and oxygen makes them critical to static coral reef species. Good water flow increases the amount of food available to corals and improves the ability of the corals to metabolise this food. It also promotes gas exchange and promotes enzyme action, respiration, calcification and photosynthesis all of which are critical processes to coral development. Sufficient water movement also helps to maintain proper water parameters. Turbulence breaks the surface of the water and allows gas exchange, which oxygenates and removes carbon dioxide. It also prevents the accumulation of biofilm. Good water currents also help to eliminate stagnant areas, where decomposing organic matter would otherwise build up. The Red Sea Max features two 550 litre per hour or 145 gallon per hour pumps. This is enough to circulate the water in the aquarium 10 times an hour, which is adequate for most species you'll be keeping in the Max. The adjustable directional outlets create enough water movement and flow to reach your invertebrates regardless of where you position them in the aquarium, allowing you to create any aquascaping layout. It's really, really important that your surface is agitated all the time because that's what allows the gas exchange. When the surface is flat, it forms a laminar layer which stops this gas exchange. Then if gas isn't exchanging in the aquarium, life is not possible in the aquarium. The filtration system is made up of a number of elements, each performing complementary tasks. The Red Sea Max features a four-stage reef filtration system, driven by two 550 litre per hour submersible pumps, enough to circulate the entire volume of the tank ten times per hour. It's designed to prevent clogging and the build-up of organics, maintaining the ideal water quality for a reef aquarium. The system is comprised of a protein skimmer, mechanical filtration, activated carbon and biological media. The heart of the Max Reef Filtration System is a protein skimmer which injects a stream of superfine air bubbles into the water, creating a thick, dry and stable foam of waste matter. The Max Skimmer filters the entire water volume of the tank nearly four times an hour. Mechanical filtration removes the large organic substances such as plant matter, excess food and sediment from the water. The mechanical filtration media in the Max consists of a two-stage sponge that traps both coarse and fine particles. The sponges are located at the inlet of the filtration chamber for easy access and should be cleaned regularly. The fine sponge at least every couple of days especially during cycling. A dirty sponge left in the filtration chamber will only increase the amount of waste in your aquarium. Some particles, known as dissolved organic carbons, are too small to be picked up by the protein skimmer, causing a build-up in the water, giving it the yellowish colour. This is where the chemical filtration becomes important. The activated carbon in the Max filter essentially acts as a large chemical sponge, absorbing these impurities out of the water. The activated carbon is made from highly porous phosphate-free charcoal. One bag removes any organic dissolved substances for at least two months, depending on your aquarium bioload. 
The biological media consists of highly porous ceramic rings, which allows a large surface area for bacterial colonisation. The first thing you need to do when setting up your Macs is to choose a suitable location. Once filled with substrate, rock and water, the aquarium is practically impossible to move. The aquarium weighs about 200 kilograms or 440 pounds when filled with water, reef base or live rock. When choosing the location, make sure you have enough room to raise the main light hood and remove the skimmer collection cup for regular cleaning. Also ensure you can reach the power center switches located along the rear right edge of the Max and that the power center can easily be removed from its niche. It's also important to choose a location with stable temperature. Aim to keep the ambient room temperature a comfortable and stable 22 degrees or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid placing the Max in front of an air conditioning unit, below heating vents, or in direct sunlight. Reef inhabitants are used to very stable temperature conditions. If you live in a warmer climate, or where the ambient temperature is above the maximum recommended, you might need to add a cooling fan or chiller to the system. A well ventilated room with moderate light is the best position for the aquarium. And if you plan to use a water chiller, ensure there's at least 10 centimetres or 4 inches of clearance behind the max to allow sufficient airflow circulation. You've probably heard the term salinity used in the context of a saltwater aquarium. Salinity is a measure of the total quantity of dissolved minerals and salts in the water. We express the salinity in parts per thousand, or grams per litre. The average salinity of the ocean is about 35 parts per thousand. Specific gravity, or SG for short, is defined as the ratio of the density of the liquid in question to the density of pure water. In the marine aquarium, we want to keep a specific gravity within the ranges of 1.022 and 1.028. We use a hydrometer to measure the specific gravity. Try your best to avoid using regular tap water in your max. It contains nitrate, phosphate and silicates, which noxious algae love. I strongly recommend using reverse osmosis, commonly referred to as RO water, or distilled water to fill up and top up your aquarium. The Red Sea Max Starter Kit includes Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. Based on the natural salt harvested from the Red Sea, Coral Pro is formulated specifically for reef aquaria. It is enriched with refined minerals to replicate natural seawater, but is higher in calcium levels, balanced alkalinity, and balanced pH. Once you've assembled your Max, the first thing you've got to do is inspect it for leaks and make sure that no damage occurred to the tank during transport. To do this, 
fill the tank to the bottom of the inner rim with fresh water. Wait for 15 minutes and inspect it for any signs of leakage. Siphon the water from the tank to empty it. Remember, do not try to move the aquarium with any water inside. When you've finished checking the max for leaks and have decided on the final location for it in your home, you can start getting your hands wet. We've prepared a quick reference setup chart, which you can download from the Max Mini site, redcmax.com, under the support section. The first stage of preparation is to fill the aquarium with water and add the salt mix. We start by filling the aquarium until the water in the aquarium reaches the underside of the inside plastic border of the max. This is to make sure the pumps will be fully submerged. Now add about four and a half kilograms or 9.9 .9 pounds of Coral Pro salt. This is the only time you can add salt directly into the aquarium. Once your max is set up, always use another container, such as a plastic bucket, which is only used for the aquarium. When mixing salt water, always add the salt to the water, not the other way around, otherwise not all the salt will dissolve. Once the salt is settled, connect the max to the power supply. Turn on the lights, activate the two circulation pumps and the skimmer pump. Direct the two pump nozzle to create good water current. After 20 to 30 minutes of pump flow in your max, the salt should dissolve completely. When all the salt is dissolved, it's time to measure the temperature and salinity. In the max starter kit, you'll find a red sea hydrometer with a built-in digital thermometer. Before you put the hydrometer into the max, make sure the black plug is inserted into the outlet at the bottom. Submerge the hydrometer into the water until the water inlet is below the surface of the water. Jiggle the hydrometer around a bit to remove any bubbles that might have formed on the pointer as this will affect the accuracy of the reading. Read the specific gravity from the scale on the left and the temperature from the digital readout in the center. If the temperature of the water is below 25 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit, switch on the heater. You should aim for a salinity of 35 parts per thousand and a specific gravity reading 